Welcome back to the channel everyone. In today's video, I want to show you how I keep my small greenhouse warm over winter. Let's get straight into it. So this is my four foot by six foot Halls greenhouse. It is a small greenhouse, um, enough room for me. Um, I've designed it to maximize the space inside, but one positive of having such a small greenhouse is that it's easier to keep uh, warm in winter and cool in summer. So let's go inside and I'll show you what I've done to maintain the temperatures. So here we are inside the greenhouse. One of the first things that I did is I insulated the north wall with this reflective um, bubble wrap insulation. Uh, the best brand that I found online after a little bit of research was a brand called Thermowrap. I will put links in the description for everything that I've bought. Um, I got it all from Amazon. I researched and found the cheapest or the best um, versions. But this bubble wrap, um, I bought a, a roll of 10 metres. It's self-adhesive on the back. And my thinking with the positioning was that um, the north wall of the greenhouse provides no direct light and no heat. Um, and it backs onto a, a fence anyway. So I've insulated it. I've doubled it up with, with 10 metres. I managed to double the insulation and it goes all the way down to the ground. And I keep that on um, throughout the year. That's permanently on there. Um, stuck directly onto the glass. And um, obviously it doesn't rot or get wet. It's waterproof. It has faded a little bit. Um, but it reflects heat. It reflects light. And... I think it's a big help in keeping the greenhouse warm. So step number one, insulate the north wall. Uh, my, my, my thoughts, my thinking was that if I had a bigger space, a bigger greenhouse, I would think about some uh, some thermal mass. Adding thermal mass, I think, is a really good idea. And, uh, you know, the best thing to use to heat your greenhouse um, is the sun, using the natural uh, sunlight and the heat. So if I had a bigger space, I'd think about adding barrels to the north wall. I know a lot of bigger greenhouses can do that. Um, have a sort of a, even a wall of black barrels filled with water. I don't have that luxury of that space with such a small greenhouse. So this is my version of adding thermal mass, just reflecting the heat um, and the light onto, on, on that north wall. Yeah, the next step was, of course, bubble wrap. It's a very common a common practice. I've bubble wrapped um, the whole greenhouse probably in November, I think I did, maybe end of October, including the door. You know, I've, I've got the door. It's a sliding door, so I just have a one piece hanging down. Um, and within that, I do add extra bits on a really cold night. I have extra bits of bubble wrap. I lay them on top of uh, my cacti. I do, I have, this is a primarily a cacti greenhouse, but I also have uh, tender plants overwintering and I do, I have got some seeds um, sowing, but my, my theory is that I'm trying to create a, a microclimate within a microclimate within a microclimate. So of course I've got, this is the sunniest corner of my, my garden, it gets as, as much sunlight as possible. Um, then the microclimate is the greenhouse itself. And then if I use these hooks here, I can actually form a, another microclimate within the greenhouse to create a protective layer on my most tender cacti. But if you don't go, grow cacti, I think the same thing applies for anything that you're growing, any tenders that you're overwintering inside. So bubble wrap is a must for creating mini microclimates and for um, holding the heat in. Okay, if we look down underneath the bench, um, I built the benches myself using batons uh, and I added um, a bar heater. This is, a, I think, a two-foot bar heater, again, from Amazon. Um, ample heating for a size, uh, this kind of space. And uh, one mistake I did make when I used to use a, grit, a shed for overwintering, uh, last couple of years I've used uh, an old shed that's now demolished and I mistakenly put the bar heater um, on the roof. And of course, heat rises, so the plants that were overwintering lower down were not getting any benefit from the heater. So my, my thinking with having the bar underneath um, the bench is that heat will rise, it'll, it'll keep uh, these cacti warm. And I've just added 
a little um a little tray just to make sure that nothing drips onto the the only bit of uh wire that might be exposed there but it's fully waterproof and this does kick out a good amount of amount of heat when it needs to and i have got this set up on a on a thermostat so this piece of kit this plug-in thermostat again was the best one that i could find um on amazon looks like this so the fantastic thing about this is that i can program it as heating or cooling at the minute i've got it set to kick in at five degrees celsius that's the lowest it will set for a for a heating uh for the heating so in other words if the temperature inside which is currently 14.4 degrees if it drops below five degrees uh the bar heater will kick in and um, i've only recently got this Pre uh, previous to this i was having to do this manually keeping an eye on the bbc weather app and if i saw that the temperature was dropping below five degrees overnight i'd have to go and switch the plug on and i'd do everything manually but you know an automated system is the best system um at the minute it's about six or seven degrees outside and it's um 14 degree 14 and a half degrees inside so there's a, there's a big differential there in terms of temperature but i can sleep safe in the knowledge that overnight if the temperature does drop below five degrees uh, the bar heater will kick in until it's heated up above there and it will turn off again so um i am doing everything on a budget and what i want to do is uh, you know particularly with uh, electricity energy prices as they are i want to use as little energy as possible um so last night the temperatures got down to about two or three degrees i think outside when i came to check this morning the temperature in the greenhouse was about seven or eight degrees so i'm pretty sure on a on a morning that was a little bit frosty this morning it was very cold um the bar heater would not have need would not have been needed um uh, on a night like that so that's how i managed to keep my greenhouse warm in winter this will be used in summer as well i can set this on a cooling uh setup where i can put in anywhere up to 30 degrees and if the temperature rises above uh, a maximum temperature you can have a a, a fan kick kick in or uh, use any use something to cool the greenhouse down and of, of course i've added an auto vent uh which you know will hope open and uh, help the air circulate when it does get hot i've managed to keep the greenhouse above five degrees using a combination of all these things over winter um, and i'm pleased to say that i don't i haven't had any major casual casualties the only thing that i know hasn't done well is uh the moon cactus which is on a, a dragon fruit root stock um these are not very hardy anyway um everything else has done okay at five degrees including my copia poa uh my lophophoria my Ariocarpus, the things that i really want to try to keep uh, keep alive so i'm really pleased with the setup um it works well for me and if you're thinking about having a small greenhouse and wondering how you can keep it warm keep everything alive over winter maybe some setup such as this uh works for you but if you look in the description below i will try to link to everything that i've bought that has worked for me on amazon um thanks very much thanks for watching this is uh, the great northern exotic garden subscribe try these videos goodbye